to my young stars you know uh, uh, one thing about that uh, they have resource limitations they have financial probably but uh, keep in mind uh, that it is good things if you have some limitations you have resource limitations money limit it will make you humble it will, make, it will make you work really harder for your purpose and you never know where you will uh, it will be uh, so i mean don't be sad about that is it is good for you yeah I am Baiki Winky and this is the Working Athlete podcast. Here I talk to working athletes from all walks of life and experts from various sports to provide you with inspiration, training tips, time management and lifestyle advice. If this is something that interests you, please make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any future episode. Today's guest, Rakibul Islam, is a two-time national champion who won gold in individual time trial at Bangladesh Cycling National Championships. From picking up an MTB during his degree to just ride around through sheer determination and hard work he has become first amateur rider to become a national champion in Bangladesh he is also an excellent duathlete and an age group podium finisher in duathlon in 2019 powerman championships in august 2021 he left his job as a pharmacist in dhaka and started training full time and started coaching people in this episode Rakibul shares his endurance journey and how working with community is helping him grow as an athlete and as a coach. His inspirational story shows how hard work and sticking to the process can help achieve what was once thought impossible. I really enjoyed this interaction. Hope you will do. With that, now let us get into my conversation with Rakibul. Hi Rakibul, uh, welcome to the Working Athlete podcast. It's a pleasure having you on the show. Uh thank you Baiki. It's the same pleasure. Awesome. Rakibul, uh, let us start by uh, talking about uh, w- what was uh, it like you know with you as a kid with sport. Uh when did uh, your relation with sport begin? All right, I mean it was uh before starting my school days uh, uh, like um, when uh, i was about to go to school before uh, at the age of so my sister they used to take me to the field and they let me play and they took me back so so i had no issues with playing outdoor or my uh, family my parents they were very uh, cooperating on that but later on what happened there were there was a tradition my Uh, teacher uh, my my father was a teacher so he wanted us to be a brilliant so there are some restrictions going out but still my elder sisters uh, they used to take me for playing and i basically learned cycling for my uh, sister playing bad riding bicycle so that happened and later on i jumped into uh, study and become very serious you know the um, typical uh, moment that they post there is about study that happened also but uh, my cycling things or my sports actually i got uh, to do after uh, when i got admitted into university so then i uh, took that thing seriously and going okay so uh, when you said uh, you know the sports became more serious when you got into university right so how was it uh, what were the sports you were doing in university and uh, you know how how did it interfere or you know go along with your uh, studies yeah there is one fun part uh, like uh, when i got admitted in university i was not staying with my parents so i was free staying in hostel and then i decided uh let's uh, enjoy i mean a bit more so i'm free now so um, then i used to go to field i used to see the um, uh, the the best player in our universities they used to play football handball cricket and but uh, i was not uh, even uh, any sort of their level but i used to train with them i trained myself with them so there was one call uh, for inter university handball competitions so there uh, i got a chance to train with them and in the first year so i started doing training with them so what strength i had on that time uh, that is uh, the regularity or uh, consistency about so i used to come every day at the same time uh, when training started so and train with them and in the first year i just got to know how how to do sports and this and that especially i was in uh, handball team and first year team was selected i was not there so uh, they told me that come next year probably will do better so next year i also uh, did the same thing i trained a lot i was doing really good and at the day of uh, team selections what happened um, they 
called my name at the first time uh, they said this is the boy who has done every training and he is doing great but we are sorry uh, he is not that skillful probably he can try for the next year so i was little bit sad and disappointed because you know uh, i was working hard but how much hard work i do i, I need to be there so in the third year what happened third year i did the same and i trained a lot i was very desperate i had to get into that handball team to represent my university or i mean there is some actually you not know, excitement you are a university player so in the third year uh, i did the same and uh, actually again they called my name at the first time but, i mean they used to call the name in the first time either you are selected you are doing best or uh, you are doing good but not enough so they called my name at the beginning and say that this is the boy who has done three years tremendous work and he is doing far better than our i mean like so called professional level player and we will be happy to have him in our team then that was the day <laughs> and actually uh, i was very happy and i was so actually you know uh, much motivated that because of that, that three years hard work gave me some results and if i work hard it worked then what happened you know the, i participated in my university and our team got third place in inter university in bangladesh we were very happy then i came back then the reality came in picture that i joined in laboratory because i was uh, doing bachelor of pharmacy i had some laboratory work then i was very sad i am not able to do uh, those sports activity in the daytime then i found that i can ride a bicycle that will also help me i can do that any time of the day so i bought a bicycle and at the same time in our university we got uh, one cycling club for the fitness enthusiasts probably or uh, the community so i joined there so i had that sportive mindset from the beginning so i took that seriously like you know as a sport but i didn't have any competitor i didn't have any coach but i started riding and later on i started exploring outside uh, you might know the name of one group bd cyclist so this Bangladesh. so this was uh, this was after you completed your degree course no it was the last year uh, it was uh, last year of last year of uh, university university because our uh undergrad is of four years program so so at okay. the fourth year, hmm. yeah so then i started roaming outside outside of my university uh, and you might have known the name of bd cyclist one cycling uh, it is very much Correct. popular so they used to arrange some local bicycle race so whether you have mtv or, or you have a road bike no problem you come and you race as much as you can so one of the races i participated and uh, i was really doing good there was around 8 lap so i was leading that 6 lap and then what happened you know technically i was not that sound so later on boy sprinted out and left me behind and they owned but the thing what happened i got to know lots of good souls because i always believe cyclists are good people and there was the actually you no know, group on there they told me the that that you are very younger you have good opportunity keep training and keep connected with us so i was connected with them but my university was far away from there so there was the starting of my bicycle racing uh, i i was racing with my mtv uh, and with the rody guys <laughs> but <laughs> still i was hoping that i can do something better and then things changes uh, changed which I, year was I, this it was which 2000, year was this 2014 okay and and then i moved to delhi delhi why because i got uh, Indian government scholarship to study in Delhi for my masters in biotechnology. So I came to Delhi, and what happened? I took my bicycle with me. I carried that MTV Excellent. with me in a bag, and 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 in the train, people started staring with me. I didn't I didn't take uh, air travel because the uh, baggage was very uh, large, and I didn't know whether they expect accept it or not. So I decided to go to by train. from uh, kolkata side to delhi so i uh, i came uh, to delhi and even uh, the customs was asking me indian and bangladeshi customs are you sure you are a you are in a student visa taking a bicycle are you going there for tourism or something i said no no i am going to study and this is what i uh, am passionate about i will train over there but i didn't know anything but i will do it the bike right <laughs> yeah so then i reached in delhi Uh, um and uh, a sad moment came in the next day I, i i didn't carry my helmet i forgot that so i went uh, some nearby shops to buy a helmet and uh, when i was going there i made an accident i made an accident 
tent and that was uh, severe uh, severe uh, i got injury in my head i, um, I got uh, some surface injuries as well i was unconscious for a while and uh, then they took me to the hospital and in the hospital authority they said that tell me your address we will arrange uh, your uh, we'll call your uh, guardians I said that I don't have any guardian and I don't have any mobile number with anyone because I am the newer one with second day. But I told them this is my university, please could you contact. They contacted and some of our university seniors came from the community. So and I was asking to the police actually, so where is my bicycle? Could you uh, actually get it or it was just uh, just lost? They said now your bicycle is there but it is severely damaged, we are sorry but we'll hand it over you to the university. I was back to university and in the next day we had uh, orientations and also in the orientation, uh, uh, my name was taken at the beginning. You know why? <laughs> they were they were saying- Because uh, uh, on the second day you met with an accident. Yeah, so they were saying that we are sorry, so we have a uh, bad news, but um, uh, but he's back. He's Mr. Akibul, he got accident. Uh, please pray for his quick recovery. So yeah, and, and everyone, every students at, uh, or the uh, teachers, they got to know this boy was riding a bicycle at the first day of his university life and he got accident and he's now admitted. Uh, yeah, so then what happens? Uh, so my desperateness became, I know, higher and higher. So I joined one team called Delhi cyclist, you might know the name, Delhi cyclist, the community right. there. Yeah, yeah. I joined there and then I got to train with them and I got to know the no, how, how long people. how long did it take for you to recover from those injuries uh, th that you met on the second day? Uh, truly, uh, uh, it took uh, around two weeks, but uh, within okay. a week I was mentally prepared to go out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah. So then I, I talked to them and the community and they welcomed me and there are stories uh, will come around after that. So then I okay. I found I found people are much more welcoming about cycling mm. or sports. Really. So okay. Yeah. So when you joined these uh, Del uh, Delhi cyclists, uh, the community there, uh, so were you able to uh, use your old bike or did you yeah, had I, to buy a new I, one? I, I was using the old bike because I was a student, uh, I didn't have that much money to purchase a bike on that moment. And I was uh, studying there with uh, scholarship money and full fund scholarship, not enough, but still okay. So I, I was riding that MTB and I, I found lots of fancy bikes over there in Delhi in that time, Drake, Jans and like a Bianchi. So yeah, so, but I, I, uh, but, uh, I found that, uh, I mean, those people are very kind hearted and again, they found me, I'm very young and they were actually a fitness enthusiast. They are of 30, 40 or 50 years old, even female also uh, riding there. So I didn't know that a female could ride a bicycle, a road bike at the age of fit. So I at first time saw them there riding and yeah. And then my journey started. So yeah, I did training. Okay. A lot of so people. how was, how, how was, how was the time in uh, Delhi while studying and the riding, uh, you know, what sort of riding did you do? Um, you know, how, how was the experience there? All right. Uh, so uh, experience was very good and uh, it, it was feeling like that I was flying. So even I was studying a lot, my mind was there with cycling. <laughs> Definitely you understood that. So, uh, so I was very regular. I was very much on time. Okay. Uh, though I had little preparation about my staffs or equipment. I used to ride MTBs and they used to ride. And uh, what happened? All of a sudden I got to know there was one event called Grand Fondo, Grand Fondo type of event and open for all to ride. So I took participate in MTB group and uh, uh, I was third. I become third. Wow. I become third and I become uh, third and, um, and people all uh, started knowing me. Oh, this boy, uh, he just came and got third position. So I was very happy and, and you know, and as people were very welcoming and they used to um, uh, tell me that come to the national team train with them, you will do far better. You know, there are uh, Delhi state team. You might know the name of Rahul Singh, uh, uh, Monty Choudhury, they are there. So yeah, yeah. one day what happened, uh, I was not racing, but I went there in, uh, it's in Gurgaon, Delhi, uh, recently called Guru Gram probably. Uh, so right. there I have, uh, they were racing with the road bikes and and I have seen that they were just, just blowing everything out. This much faster racing. <laughs> so. 
So I thought that, uh, that why not me? But I was always sad about my bicycle. Then uh, I started saving uh, some money and I came back to Bangladesh. I took a I, uh, road bike, old one still. So I came back to Delhi and then I started training seriously uh, with some national players over there. They used to training in Noida Expressway. You know Noida Expressway? So I was following the right. tail. I had never had uh, courage to talk to them or never had courage to ride with them, but I used to follow them. And yeah, and one day one of the na national coaches of Delhi told me that, boy, you were doing good. Uh, could you, do you want to join us? I said, that, of course I want, but I told that I'm not Indian. Would it be a problem? They said, no, you just come and train with us. And then I got to know about structured training or national type of races or like international races or mass start. ITT, okay, or crash race, or like no velodrome race, race. and then actually things started uh, to change dramatically. Awesome. So you once they once you started uh, uh, training with the national team, uh, what were your uh, learnings uh, and what was uh, you know your most memorable experience during that time? All right, uh, about training, what I knew before and what I started to knowing after uh, joining that uh, national training, it was completely different. I thought that uh, riding hard is always necessary. And you, if you are, want to be a good cyclist, you have to ride every time, every day. When you train, you have to just ride hard. And uh, But uh, you know it, right? I mean, the structured training doesn't work like that. Yeah. So that, uh, that things I started to know and also started to know that you have to eat well, rest well okay and you have to have some plan on your training or rest calendar or there are some marginal gains you can get from cycling even not from training just changing some stuff right. or something those are the things started knowing and and one important thing i uh, know um, knew from them you need a coach uh, you need a coach because uh, you are you know how to train but you don't know how to analyze yourself okay where mm. is your gap? For that, you need, need a course. And time was really great in Delhi. Uh, I had a good friend. Still, I have. I'm in contact with them. And I used to follow Navin Jones. Okay. So, he was a uh, national ITD champion during that time. I used to follow him. I used to read his post size or four or five times. Even when he posts anything. Anything about <laughs> I used to just read and read. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and also, you know, the Indian track team. Track cycling. Shao, Shao. Mm. Or, or they are they were preparing in Delhi. I had opportunity them. You know, so on that 2014 to 16, while I staying in Delhi, I, I saw a revolutions of cycling. Mm. Okay, and probably that message I carried, and I I had to come back. Oh, uh, there are some events I participated later on, and I was a champion in some of the events. Okay, local events. Awesome. It was not national event, community level, but you know, I mean, uh, gradually I become one of the I mean, like you know, uh, small hero or like you know, little hero. <laughs> my daily cyclist <laughs> and they, yeah. they use it yeah. a lot yeah, yeah because you know from uh, riding uh, yeah, MT, uh, mtb and coming third uh, you yeah. sh shifted to road bike uh, yeah. even if it is bold and started training with uh, you know proper uh, structure obviously yeah. you are going to you know make that jump to the top step right so yeah. you know then i started thinking i think you started winning all the club races and stuff yeah and that was like you know when a quantum jump for me uh, when i uh, my my progress was that much and i was getting support by others and i was starting looking forward like i will join in olympic <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. my dream yeah, yeah. awesome so from that time 2014 and 16 you used that uh, time uh, not only to get your master's degree in biotechnology you also uh, you know got a master's degree of sorts in uh, you know cycling uh, uh, and road cycling uh, so what, what was it uh, you know what happened once you go, went back to bangladesh and uh, you know, uh, started working and stuff yeah um, uh, so uh, i uh, went uh, back to bangladesh uh, in 2016 mid and I, I was planning to go for phd in the uh, united states i took GREs and other um, i mean like eligible exams i took them uh, so but when i was back to bangladesh i found the same situations in bangladesh already there boys are racing as yes, uh, you know community as are developing seniors are taking care of the juniors uh, if they could come in cycling you know, I mean, and then what i decided 
I'm not going back. Going back to not going back to India or not to US. I told my parents right. that uh, yeah, I'll stay in Bangladesh. So they said that I mean probably it's uh, some bit of uh, tiredness from um, like you know higher studies, so he needs break. He said, they said, okay, uh, the, I was staying in Dhaka and my place, my, my, I mean, my native place is uh, like six hours travel from my, from Dhaka. Uh, so I had communications with my parents through mobile phone or that community. I was staying in Dhaka and I took a job as I had bachelor degree in pharmacy. So I was, a, uh, I, I started my job as a pharmacist in Apollo hospital. Dhaka. Okay. Yeah. So, and the job was nine to five. There was no that much uh, load, extra load. And, uh, and I was able to train in the morning and in the, uh, and you might know, uh, the name of team BDC who are racing, uh, Correct. and changing the racing culture in community level in Bangladesh. I joined them. Right. I joined them and they used to know me before that a guy in Delhi doing goods and he's coming to Dhaka. So they welcomed me and they welcomed me. I started training with them. And, and one day finally I told my mom that mom, uh, I'm not for PA. So they were surprised. They were disappointed as well that uh, what he is doing actually. So they used to come to visit me and see my conditions. If I had any, I said, no, 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 things are going fine. And you don't know what I am doing. I will surprise you one day. <laughs> Give me some opportunity, <laughs> take some, uh, so then uh, they oh wow wow uh, one thing uh, in Bangladesh there was one duathlon event so it was running and cycling it was a Dhaka challenge and I had opportunity to participate in Delhi also I was champion in that uh, duathlon so in Dhaka nobody knew that I would do good but uh, out of nowhere I came and I raced and I uh, blew them blew everyone up and uh, out and I was the champion again and now Delhi community knows me and Dhaka community also knows me that he's the guy promise and in 2018 uh, I went to Indonesia for power man running run bike run that was one event mm -hmm. and then I met with real elite athletes. I mean those who we call real elite and they are from Europe America Australia Asia. so and another thing uh, I have found that those elite athletes I thought that uh, they'll not talk to me or they'll show their but I have seen that they are like us and they are so much welcoming and they listen a lot and I was very happy I mean to be a cyclist or to get in touch with them and they said also do you have quotes I said no not yet but I know the importance they said that only thing you invest for now is no you have enough equipment go hire up and then i got a coach in 2018 may uh, my coach is from mm. us arizona uh, i didn't have power meter or anything so he used to train me with heart rate based training and uh, and i used to do duathlon training running and cycling running and cycling both and and apparently what i did uh, from that time 2017 18 i started to train people because i have seen the culture mm -hmm. in delhi so why not uh, training people in dhaka to help them stay active and healthy lifestyle. So I did the same with my one of seniors. His name is Abdullah Tahir Chaudhary. So we started giving training uh, free of cost. We continue that 2020 till uh, Corona started. So free training. Mm -hmm. People started uh, being fit and they are getting their purposes. Somebody are becoming cyclists, runners, you know, or somewhere. Uh, and, and there are lots of events coming. Uh, running cycling events so what happened on that time in dhaka started to knowing us these are the two or three boys and they're doing uh, something good and we become reference point someone wants to get healthy lifestyle or some cycling and running they use right and 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 in the corona time what we found we were not able to go we we're not able to go out and and we developed an online system that people can sign in and train with us through online so we developed one um, website it is called aalps.org alps.org and from there anyone from anywhere in the world can get online guided coach or one-to-one -one coach as well so okay. we have uh, we have pull up courses there i mean not that much uh, advanced level but beginners level but they can support uh, to your active lifestyle or basic cycling basic running etc and so uh, yeah. so you when you um, when you came back to uh, uh, bangladesh uh, you started work, working right so uh, yeah. what happened to that job were you uh, continuing uh, that job while you were doing all this uh, 
training for yourself and also uh, helping others with their training and stuff yeah yes i was doing that job i continued that job till uh, 31st august uh, 2021 why wow. because okay. that that job was giving me some uh, some security because i didn't want to take money from my parents all and, and it's not wise right you are completed masters degree and taking again money and then and and that job used to support me my racing my uh, like you know training course and, and those are the thing and i felt from inside that if uh, i am able to utilize much more time probably i would do far better but i was not getting mm. right time to quit my job because i don't, didn't have any secondary options to earn and i was training people free of cost and that you know that become a bit of habit of me uh, or like you know type of me i i won't charge i would never charge i mean that professionalism didn't grow in me but corona changed everything corona changed everything i i i had to do some home office as well and, and also some extra hour as well because you know in the hospitals during corona we had to do extra hours even sometimes we didn't get any uh, day off in a whole but that happened that correct happened. yeah but i got apollo hospital was international level hospital and uh, people are very much professional they didn't impose something that you cannot bear that was good things and my supervisor was very kind person and he used to support me as well he used to encourage me so yeah that was there so Excellent. i didn't quit job till uh, 2020 okay so you were uh, training uh, uh, you know people and uh, you know you were uh, taking care of uh, you are doing your um, job you were uh, doing your own training you are training people and how, how did you manage the time uh, during that time okay about my training i used to train in the morning uh, like morning starting at 5 it ends at 8 and the challenge was because uh, you know the cities are having lots of traffic uh, it is it is not wise to go out after 8 in the morning huge traffic there are chances mm. of accidents roads are not cyclist friendly uh, that was one of the challenge and also challenge was that if i am training hard i have no recovery time i have to freshen up and go to okay. hospital okay and uh, and in the hospital i didn't have opportunity to sit i have to move see patients uh, taking care about the medicine and you know writing reports okay talking to consultant connecting consultant and patients about their medicine and yeah uh, so so that was very challenging when i i was coming back to home after my um, uh, job every day i was very tired very tired means very tired i was not able to walk i felt like that i have to sleep entire mm. night but there was right. something yeah there are some hours from inside that i have to go back to the field and train people because uh, they they were mostly working athletes or working fitness enthusiasts they used to come in the ground have a, we had a one um, like you know football field like uh in the evening we could train over there so uh, they used to wait for me i i went there trained them and it was like Three days a week schedule, so I used to train them. And rest of the day, what I did in the evening, I used strength training. Used to listen lots of post podcasts, you know, uh, keeping update about uh, you guys actually, you know. So what what my Indian friends are doing? Okay, is there any update in India that they are racing? And these are the things I used to do in the evening. But in the morning, I used to train. I I train six days a week. One day was okay. Okay. So when uh, when you finally kind of decided uh, to quit your job. in come in august 2021 how uh, how difficult was that decision or how easy was it and what were the things that you considered before you know taking uh, this step of uh, pursuing uh, sport and coaching full time okay and uh, first of all i used to share everything to my parents i didn't hide so i i i told them uh, in 2021 at the first month january i told that mom uh, i can i have to quit this job so they were happy they thought that i will go for phd i'll leave this country you know have uh, had i said that no i'm not doing anything i'll i'll spend my whole time in cycling and running and this will be my prime life and and again they become disheartened they become sad about my decision and what i did uh, in 2021 from january i started pilot i was to used to connect with uh, people via online and i used, i started charging them and there are good people around me i told you we started to develop a community some of them told me why not you charge and some of them they told me that uh, you charge me okay and train me by all like no problem uh, uh, and don't feel bad about like you are charged uh, this is promise professional things you can charge no problem so i got two three person and i used to train them by online and uh, later on uh, money started coming and i got some more trainees as well i used to train them in the evening 
because in the evening uh, i didn't have to go to the field due to corona and uh, so i used to train them in the evening and in the morning my training and in the daytime the job uh, i had around i had four trainees over there so uh, and they are mostly corporate trainees they used to pay better uh, and what i found uh, doing those things i am uh, doing better than my job in terms of earning okay, okay. and only problem is that i have to spend 9 hours for my job okay and that makes me lots of I mean, a lot of tired and but still i was continuing and when i sat and oh i was sitting with uh, one of the seniors you know dravid alom correct yeah uh, alom, we we had a podcast uh, with him uh, on the working alert podcast uh, we had dravid uh, on the show yeah so um, I, i sat with him i, I shared that uh, dravid bhai uh, i'm 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 quitting this job they said are you sure I say yeah. i said yes and he said then okay let's let us sit and see figure out how you can earn so and and, and he said uh, and he told that these are the ways you can do uh, so start charging and uh, cha- i mean sit and calculate your uh, like you know I mean, how much money you will charge okay and he helped me that way he became my uh, uh, fitness trainee one of the fitness trainees and also um, he helped me get some other trainees as well so and from the month of march 2021 i found i was earning far better than my job uh, so in a week i spend around 10 hours uh, with my trainees but i am earning far better than my job so then i one day go to my uh, uh, fitness supervisor and i, I told that uh, i need to quit this job by june and uh, this is my ultimate he was a bit disappointed he was finding me that he this boy is doing good in sports uh, earning better Uh, so why he is quitting job is he in uh, many mental pressure or anything i said no no nothing like that i want to train more very so he was uh, he was open and uh, he told me that okay take a month think and me again so i took a month i i thought and i i found that if i'm taking risk i should take the risk now then never and 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 uh, at the month of may i gave my resignation letter three months i i, I uh, resigned but there were some issues then i had to um, i quit my job uh, 31st august 2021 and still uh, what happened in the meantime there was one game and 2020 one uh, april it was uh, bangladesh games same as national event and in the itt i become the champion i became the champion in tw- and, uh, in 2020 march 2021 april in april 2021 okay yeah, april 2021 yeah while this working job. yeah while work awesome and that also actually helped me decide hmm. because you know yeah we have to fight with uh, or compete with uh, service guys army police team navy team or or there are other other service teams you know uh, uh, service teams uh, player are they are advanced then about fees or about their experience so but what happened uh, but i what i knew that i trained more than them there was uh, there was my you know inner strength i don't know about my competitor but i i trained more than if they are spending uh, like 7 8 or 10 hours in a week i'm spending like 20 hours for my training that's a very simple things but i didn't know how to beat them so yeah i was champion uh, with a marginal 3 second gap with a guy so in itt so yeah so i became champion and uh, i was the first one in bangladesh uh, from non professional player who become champion in that uh, category beating army or like police or those service guys and that was our 40th national game very good and and, and then community started coming to me and saying that and that you you need to train more and we want to see in other levels and those are the things uh, that helped me to quit my job actually and after quitting right job, so the, you know while while uh you know staying busy with your uh, with the job uh you trained h- hard enough to uh beat uh, people who are much you know at a much more uh, uh, professional level like services and uh, police and all that and managed to uh, win the national title uh, so that is a really commendable achievement congratulations sir uh thank you thank you very much and and my parents they used to remote uh, stay in the remote area they didn't know but they on one day they called me you become champion but you didn't tell us i said uh, <laughs> not really like that but i was worried like uh, uh, we accepted or not but how they came to know they came, they saw me in the television and newspaper <laughs> so yeah <laughs> 
yeah. not a so bad way to learn uh, about good things <laughs> so that happened and had before that one thing happened that was a cycling that was duathlon um uh, in 2019 i went to malaysia for powerman asian championship so in powerman asian championship in my age category uh, i i was second i was on the podium wow so, yeah mm-hmm. i mean and that also I mean, there are some steps in my life that always help me to take this you know uh, and on, on that time um, actually you know i wanted to train more so when yeah, you yeah, when you went to to the when you went to uh, powerman the, for the first time uh, in 2018 uh, that that is when uh, that, uh, that is where you kind of uh, had that uh, advice from others to take yeah. on a coach and train properly and that you went back next year and uh, you know ended up in the, on the podium uh, uh in your uh, age category which is a fantastic uh, testament to the process and hard work right yeah i mean yeah and and because and, and one thing um, uh, to note that i had uh, i used to read a lot anything about my research mm-hmm. or about my sports i used to read a lot with a lot like i had um, in most of the evening i used to read uh, so I, i wanted to find my gaps I, i used to talk to my coach or my experienced people or i used to knock a lot even i used to knock navin as well <laughs> uh, he was kind to the sport in some of the some of the issues so and uh, and i i started finding my gaps honest and mm-hmm. where i can work and i didn't have any actually you know uh, you know any lackings of training hard only i had limitation of resource honestly to say and uh, yeah and and i was um, second in that powerman uh, event powerman asia championship and when i was finishing honestly to say and that moment uh, we had 300 meter left and i was so happy and i it was the feeling was like i was winning a olympic gold medal so there are lots of spectator and they were just uh, i'm cheering me up must be they don't know me where i am from or who i represent but they they just cheered me a lot i was like you know racing in a olympic track in some crash one or two of one event so and on that year, uh, moment i actually uh, yeah promised myself i still remember that if i'm going back i'm training really hard and i'm training really smart and and as god has gifted me that physique or mental ability i must utilize them i must um, do something that i can inspire so uh, training hard uh, working for the goals okay believing in the process all the things um, i mean like you know started uh, to work from there i become so so happy and so actually you know determined to work really hard. awesome awesome yeah that that was uh, uh, that is very evident in the uh, kind of results that came about after you know as a result of that process right the sticking to the process working uh, hard and working smart and putting in the hard work and uh, you know you saw the results uh, in t- in terms of podium at powerman uh, becoming a national champion and uh, you know continuing to help others as well awesome yeah. so in uh, uh, yeah in in between uh, all this you uh, were also part of a guinness world record right so uh tell me a little bit about that and how how the how it came about and what was the planning and all that stuff okay i mean the guinness world record was done by team bdc team and uh, it was four member team so uh, the record was uh, we had to complete at least 1500 km uh, within 48 hours of time uh, it was Correct. like that and uh, in 2021 uh, we uh, actually announced that uh, uh, we announced in community level only that we are going to do this kind of record and probably we can ask but we were double blind we didn't know how to uh, like you know arrange those uh, big staffs and big management or who are the capable riders because um, we have to ride 48 hours continuously and we don't know we never did it before and but what happened uh, uh, so as i was uh, good uh, with uh, teaching people or coaching people and i had coach as well so i knew how to actually you know get prepared for that but never for that much distance so um, uh, i was assigned to take care of, of the physical fitness and cycling performance of others only dravir bhai he was taking uh, uh, co- coaching from his coach rest of the riders i had to take care and about the management things it, it was a very very what i say on a very big supply chain 48 hours 
lot of lot years. of logistics to manage a lot a lot and we had volunteer around 150 wow we we yeah i mean there were uh, some uh, witness from the guinness side there were some uh, pacers of uh, cyclists there were some motor bikers to clean the road okay and uh, and there were uh, they ensure and and the volunteer ins- ensured the supply of electricity 48 hours of cctv footage in different different angles there are medical teams i mean it was proper things and yeah. i would i would thank uh, to the sponsors uh, dabur you know the indian company dabur and they operate in bangladesh as well they came forward to support us in the beginning nobody believed that it is possible doing 1500 km within 14 48 hours and one thing uh, uh, when time started to come closer we were very much optimistic but Uh, we faced all of a sudden one challenge we we don't control it was one cyclone announced uh, the day was uh, december 8 to 10 and the cyclone started on uh, december 6 i remember mm. and and um, i mean nobody believed that on that winter windy and rainy uh, time we would be able to even go out for ride right uh, so but we are mentally set we told that when we start we'll end it that kind of mindset we had and yeah we had to ride in the rain and in the cold as well you might have seen those chairs uh, but later yeah. what happened yeah we uh, we wanted to celebrate our uh, in the, uh, victory day it is 16 december so we wanted to make it 1600 km not 1500 so we were riding faster and when time started to finish and like it was four or five hours left so we confirmed that uh, 1500 km is done so we are unofficially doing it but officially it is will announce because there are lots of persons. so later on I'm sorry <laughs> later on we uh, made it uh, 1667 km uh, within 48 hours and guinness gave us that record that we are guinness record from bangladesh awesome yeah that is that is a very commendable feat so what were the some of the uh, challenges that you faced during that uh, ride and how did you overcome them uh, the challenge was uh, not from us actually uh, because uh, at the first day we came to know that we can we can we are not sick or we are not having an accident but the challenge was the rain the cold or uh, or the night actually we are doing that in a remote mm. area close circuit and there are some jackals there are some cats or some nocturnal animals uh, are there they are moving here and there even i had one accident <laughs> i was i was fallen wow. down yeah one small calf that jumped uh, in front of my you know all of a sudden in front of my wheel i was grounded i was wow. grounded boys <laughs> were very much worried and um, i said that i'm okay i quickly got into the bike started uh, riding again so there are some minor accidents that happened mm-hmm. and 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 apart from that things were, were and and you know right honestly uh, we had opportunity to take some rest because it was interval one after another okay like a relay type uh, but we could not honestly to say we were that much uh, mm. excited that entire 48 hours was so amazing and another thing to share that cyclist community of bangladesh and they were so much uh, supportive they came from different different places they set up their tents they stayed night wise they did um, uh, they did uh, encourage me okay shouted at us and and that we don't sleep or we don't uh, fall again you know they made that whole entire uh, uh, life so yeah we are really yeah. happy and that task and ultimate thing what we got from guinness is that uh, we crossed a barrier you know nobody believed that uh, this kind of people can do 100 or more than kilometers within 48 hours so we could in- inspire entire nations or especially those who are mad about cycling or sports you know cycling is not that much popular in bangladesh right so yeah, and, and cycling means always there about services and about someone who is already gifted not for the community it is, it, it is not that popular in india as well <laughs> you know it's yeah. all cricket yeah cricket football or uh, like you know yeah. fencing or like that kind of yeah sports right. mm. uh, but we are rising from the actually right from there from there from there we didn't have any uh, actually problem with the sponsors or any people started giving yeah. our support even we had a plan that sponsors are not, are not coming we'll do crowdfunding but we will do it. awesome yeah okay. yeah de- definitely the these things uh, the things like this definitely the achievements like this will definitely uh, inspire uh, the uh, others and motivate them to pursue something 
out of their comfort zone right so definitely yeah. you guys achieved much more than the guinness record itself i think yeah i believe so, well so. Done. so that the guinness was not that tough for us <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome so uh and uh, um, more recently you uh, successfully defended your uh, national uh, title uh, so tell talk uh, as uh, talk a little bit about that all right um, honestly to say you know uh, it was my category b race for now uh, uh, why because i was preparing for that asian championship again i wanted to far better uh, do better than before and why power is man. category power man Asia Championship in Malaysia is coming on right. October 2000, uh, 2022. Uh, okay. So why it is category B? Uh, you know, in 2021 uh, August, I quit my job, uh, uh, and at the third day of uh, jobless time, I relocated myself to this place. Uh, this place is called Khagrachori. It's in uh, uh, southeast part of Bangladesh near Myanmar border. Mostly hilly region. Uh, like if you are riding 100 kilometer, you can get of 16 to 1800 meter elevation, which is good. Wow. I think. Yeah. Uh, uh, and and hills are always hills are, good. Yeah, hills are always good and. Uh, it takes a lot and also gives you back a lot. So uh, on the very third day, I uh, relocated myself over here. And and the thing is that uh, in the first three months, I'm talking about you, my preparation, right? First three months of staying in hills, I, w I wanted, oh, on that time I quit, uh, I left my actually, you know, coach. Now I am self coach. Uh, so uh, on that time, uh, in first three months, uh, I I worked on how I, uh, how good I can train because I have ample of time in my hands. I was train. I, I decided to train twenty hours plus per week. And uh, and first three months was that uh, my endurance build program. So I used to ride or run a lot anytime uh, more than before. And then I found that my endurance is far better than before. I can sustain longer time. And after three months, three months means uh, from uh, uh, this uh, January to like March, next three months block, I started to working with some speed gain or some part. And, mm, yeah. uh, um, and, and by the time I became used to with this place because uh, the languages of this place or people or uh, the resource ability, availability are totally different. People are really good. There is no doubt. But the problem is that li limitation of resource. And I was a little mm -hmm. bit struggling about my trainees because I relocated and I need 100% internet connections, electricity as well. So later on, I have sourced that and also going smooth. And yeah, so I trained. I trained a lot. And this time also I had believe in my mind that uh, I'm here staying in remote places or not suitable for staying, but still I'm training far better than. So national game could be category b days for me okay and okay yeah and i knew i by the time i knew far better than uh, before about my competitors and uh, yeah so i was training hard i was training really hard and i was also doing some uh, give back workout activities i was helping the kids in the hills they they used to train mountain biking and people used to call me to look after them so I was open. I was really open. And honestly to say, uh, I got trained a lot. I got to recover. I got to eat quality food because village or remote areas food are always fresh. You know it, right? So yeah, that I got. Definitely. And, and I don't have refrigerator over here. So what I get, I get fresh, I cook and eat myself. And another thing is that Super. Uh, yeah, coming here, I I actually learned to cook properly. Otherwise, I didn't have any option. And also, I do thank right. you as well because you sometimes you showed us how to eat better or how to source good things, um, you know, used to make some of those energy bars, you know, used to show some uh, like in a plate of healthy breakfast as well. So, yeah. Right. Um, I, I need to do more of that. I It's been a while since I made uh, <laughs> such posts. So, you know, hearing from you that, uh, you know, these things are helping, I, I should do do more of those as well. I guess. Please do, please do. You know, I mean, I didn't follow what exactly you do, did. But I all I, I definitely followed that eating good, sourcing good, and you know these are not I mean that much tough thing. You can manage it if you want. Exactly. So yeah. that helped. That helped. That helped. And uh, and and also um, so yeah, I was I was training hard. I was training hard, and 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 this time what happened? Um, I always wanted I and along with uh, Dravid Bhai from Team BDC, we wanted to take uh, as much possible uh, to our team to national level. Because you know, uh, whether you are staying in community level, but if you are want to represent your country or you want to do better, you have to 
perform in national levels if you're performing good in national levels then you can make a standard okay people will start believing you okay you are beating this and that people that means you are doing good uh, so this time we, we decided we'll give as much possible team to the national in the national as a team like team bdc we don't have opportunity to participate but we can represent our district or a state type you do uh, so we did that and and i i thought uh, actually you know the young starts about how they can gain some they were the same they were afraid of the national national players services teams players they thought that we will be blown away probably only me i'll do good but what happened in this nationals in the itt uh, we got gold uh, and team time trial we got bronze and one uh, actually you know magic happened in a female category we got one bronze in ice wow and, awesome yeah and that girl she is 35 years old and she's a journalist and i mean these are the news and what happened what one positive things we have uh, when we win something means a lot to the community it means that community has owned that yeah and and you know uh, you, you know the media people or the you know seniors or the enthusiast people they just come and jump and listen one and they directly say that you guys are inspiring people you did guinness world record for bangladesh and you were becoming national champion you are beating anything i mean in the country so yeah and and the same thing you know we, i was getting inspiration from you guys so probably we are also inspiring someone so it's a change change reaction it's yeah it important. is it, it is like pop you know passing that spark right uh, you know lighting uh, those souls and passing on the inspiration from one to other it's yeah yeah i've seen it, it is very amazing you know and um, even i started reading book uh this is one i'm reading mindset so um, and uh, and i see lots of books what is that book again uh it is uh, called mindset mindset who, who is the other i can't see uh, that clearly yeah. dr carlos uh dr carlos yeah mindset yeah. yep for the for the mindset. listeners it would be a good uh, good thing yeah. to know right uh, yeah so, awesome yeah so this time what happened in national let me uh, just summarize it uh in national uh, last year i had uh, win over 3 second only this time i have made a uh, 1 minute 10 second gap uh, in itt so brilliant <laughs> and 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 the good thing is that uh, probably i become a little bit mature now i know my can competitor so that i kept this as a category b race and now national teams like services teams or different police army or they want me to join that uh, but i sorry i have to de- deny that because i have to give lot more to the community when i am in the service team problem is that i won't be able to communicate or give back to my and even oh, when okay. i got offered offer with some hands, handsome uh, salary or support still i am not forward for that mm-hmm. i'm continuing with the level yeah okay yeah, oh, brilliant man uh, you know the, the great thing uh, Uh, about uh, this time like you said that you from 3 second difference uh, the difference became uh, much more pronounced okay. like 1 1 minute 10 seconds and not only that going there as a team and uh, winning bronze in time trials uh, team time trial and then uh, uh, bronze in women category so it is not just about you it is also growing and con- your contribution to others as well right so Uh, growing as a community is also uh, great to see yeah yeah so congratulations and, uh, again thank you very much uh, and one thing i have seen that uh, doing those kind of activities like i mean like you know training as much hard possible giving back to the society it helps me to train more and it keeps me right. away doing some unnecessary stuff sir to be honest because right. um, because i'm 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 not doing full time job i am training people i have ample of time in my hand okay there are ways of being getting diffracted you know it right so when i'm yeah. at my community i'm giving them back and i had a good feel inside in our voice it says that i'm being right so i have nothing to you know and 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 by the time my mom and dad so they are now my fan <laughs> <laughs> amazing now, amazing now my fan and even they ask me Well, how was your training how is going on they used to ask me that when i will quit this kind of now they ask me about my training <laughs> yeah yeah so through your conviction and your hard work uh, they uh, they also you know uh, became your fans they also started believing in whatever you are doing yeah, excellent yes. yeah this has been a fantastic uh, conversation uh, rakibul it's been fantastic uh, so to kind of conclude this uh, session what are some of the tips that you would give uh, 
working as lets to do well at sport and uh, they were their life i think first of all uh, you should be find where you get interested in it is very important without interest really you know no one can impose any uh, to you it's you uh, who can choose so interest is a must and and get involved or get engaged with community because community will give you a lot and it will help you to learn and also uh, about the young stars i'd say uh, that uh, keep patience keep patience is important and believe in the process again and sometimes we uh, make a big goal but we are not aware our about the process so what for your process and work on your process is very important and one thing uh, today you are not there but tomorrow you must be there if you are working hard or if you are working uh, smartly definitely there is no such thing called genetic gifted or some luck or something it's you if you are working hard you'll definitely get it and and about the uh, senior athlete uh, age, age is just a number because i'm working with some elite you know dravid got uh, bronze medal at the age of 40 that yeah. female got that female got uh, bronze medal at, at the age of uh, 35 and now she's so much motivated she will train hard for that again and we have a beautiful community and uh, my friends from india my friends from bangladesh we all have a beautiful community around us if you are doing for the community definitely will get even even for me if awesome. i'm not a, I'm, 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 i'm still i have miles to go but i see if not not me but someone in the future will you know you know uh, actually you know make us proud much much okay so yeah, yeah I, i'm 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 very much hopeful about uh, south asian cycling culture or sports culture is is really growing and and it's not far that someday uh, all the focus will come to this south asian awesome awesome i'm sure uh, you know like you said the seeds we are sowing uh, you guys are uh, putting in uh we'll see the f- fruit uh, sometime uh, soon in the future with you know lot more athletes getting inspired and putting in the work and doing uh you know uh, doing great at these levels what yes. i have missed uh, to my young stars you know uh, uh one thing about that uh, they have resource limitations they have financial probably but uh, keep in mind uh, that it is good things if you have some limitation you have resource limitations money limit it will make you humble it will make it will make you work really harder for your purpose and you never know where you will uh, it will be uh, so i mean don't be sad about that is it is good for you yeah brilliant thanks again uh, they, those are very valuable tips uh, rakabul and uh, it's been fantastic uh, uh hearing about your journey and how far you have come over the years and how you are inspiring others uh, as well and you know contributing to their uh, growth as well thanks again uh, for taking the time and uh, sharing your journey with the working athlet pod uh thank you baiki you are doing uh, amazing job and uh, and i appreciate your work and hopefully in future we are meeting yes looking forward to that that was my conversation with rakibul I hope you enjoyed that. If you are enjoying these podcasts and are finding them useful, please consider supporting the podcast by subscribing to the channel on YouTube. It really helps. You can also subscribe to the channel on your favorite podcasting app and rate the podcast 5 star. As always, thank you for your continuous support. See you next week with another guest.